I would like to thank our top sponsors Bergemo, Matthias Preu, Ivan Justen, and Fergus Ryan for making this show possible. And welcome to the Cave of Apelles. Despite art world propaganda of progress, people all over the globe still want to learn classical painting. However, many cannot find a place to study the craft, making the path of self-learning their only option. But how do you tackle the many challenges? My guest this evening knows about them all and sits down to share his thoughts on everything from suggested exercises and painting materials to basic rules of storytelling. Janne Kösser, I'm glad to have you on the show. Thank you for inviting me. So you are here to teach us all about how, what to think when you're going to learn yourself some painting. Yes, I guess uh, my task is to do that right. today. <laughs> okay, so we have to check your credentials first. Like, uh, tell us about don't, don't, don't <laughs> look for the papers. <laughs> tell us about yeah, I mean, your, a little bit about your back background. Most, uh, German yeah. papers, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I guess my uh, credentials. Um, uh, I, I'm a self-learned painter. And um, in terms of uh, actual uh, schooling, I don't have anything. But uh, I'm now a student of art, of course. So I can add that to my credentials. Mm. <laughs> but... Um, well, the way I uh, got into painting was just by, uh, I just had a natural interest as a child. And um, sort of, you know, when you uh, sketch your Lego figures or go out and paint a tree and show your parents and they say, oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> My mother was nice enough to say, oh, that's actually really good. So I continued. <laughs> and uh, Shout out to your mother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. shout out. <laughs> And, um, well, uh, then I um, just, I, I stuck with it and uh, I started to uh, have an apprenticeship as a graphics designer, which I finished. And right. as a graphics designer, you... Uh, does that include illustration or is it just computer? It, it's illustration, it? but it's all ba computer-based, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. And um, from there, you always get told, oh, what are you going to do? Uh, do you want to... Uh, Go into uh, advertisements. Do you want to make brochures or placards? Uh, or uh, mm. and one of them is tattoos. And uh, I thought, oh, tattoo. Uh, that sounds nice. I mean, I don't know. I was quite aimless at that point, so I thought, oh, tattoo is nice. And then I that's uh, like tattoo sketches for a while, and uh, I tried to make it work with tattoo people. <laughs> give them my sketches to get them tattooed on people. Mm. But then uh, I just felt that there's uh, really something wrong there because I had this thought once, uh, a tattoo will die <laughs> together with the person. I mean, unless it, I heard there are some companies who cut it off and then put it on the walls or something. <laughs> Draw it, put it on, but it's, uh, okay, you know, yeah. it's a little bit strange. Yes. And uh, then I... Uh, and I, for some strange reason, I was really early on concerned with this need for uh, timelessness. That, that something, when I do something, it has to last. Mm. It just it cannot just stay within my lifetime. But and you, I mean, you you are consciously verbalizing that it has to be. No, I mean not in those uh, terms. No, but but I, you were I had the feeling that. I, I have to make something that will last. Yeah, yeah. I have to make something good that will last. And uh, my grandpa actually uh, was uh, interested in painting. And uh, I mean, he's doing sort of, as a younger guy, he does uh, landscape painting in Spain, the, the ships and mm. very bright colors. You know? yeah. And he had some uh, oil colors laying there. I had a grandfather like that too. Yeah. yeah. Um, and 
he sort of uh, said, oh, you should uh, try some uh, oil paints. And I was like, oh, it's, it was th I was too young at that point and I dismissed it. But then uh, when I arrived at that point, I uh, said, uh, I want to try acrylic paints and I couldn't make that work at all. And okay. It was just, and then uh, I actually, so I, I have to pick up oil paints. And I went to my grandfather, picked up the oil paints he had. And uh, then I actually thought, what do I want to paint? What do I like? And uh, I went into the store and I went to the, the section with the painting mugs and I thought, what, what works for me? What, what immediately uh, touches me and, and what doesn't? And I sort of um, picked up uh, a Rembrandt book, which uh, just came naturally to me. I didn't know anything about Rembrandt. Mm. Or, uh, or a nerd room for that matter. <laughs> I mean, I was not influenced by that at that point. Um, and I just took it home with me and I, I read up on Rembrandt and I came to the conclusion I have to do a self-portrait. Mm. That's, the, that's the thing I have to do because Rembrandt did it. <laughs> that's a good way to start. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just copying quite directly what you see. Mm. Right? Yeah. yeah. So the first thing is set up my easel, put the canvas down and sat down and looked into the mirror and first I was, oh God, this horrible face, <laughs> staring back. No. And, uh, and then I uh, just uh, looked at Rembrandt, saw main concerns, light shadow. That's what I blocked in first, the shadow, then the lights. And immediately, uh, because I have some exp had some experience with uh, drawing, I got a uh, really good likeness. Mm. And I was very pleased with uh, how the, the, the oil paint worked and how it uh, just uh, sort of you could really play with it. It's uh, a great difference from the acrylic uh, it's, uh, it's plastic uh, fantastic uh, uh, sensation. It's so wonderful, yeah. yes. Um, but uh, let me pause you. Uh, were you con conscious about this, this thing of timelessness then from the very beginning? Yes. Or was, or was it more in an yes. emotion? I'm, I mean, uh, perhaps I'm just a melancholic guy, but I have in my mind always uh, that uh, life is very short. And uh, do I really want to make tattoos for someone who's going to die? And this tattoo will uh, rot in the grave with them. Right. This is not, uh, this is not going to last. And um, the same with the acrylic pen, actually. It's going to break down in, what, a hundred years, maybe earlier, actually. Um, so that actually was my main motivation. Really? And yeah. that also really goes into my concern for technique, for example. Right. Because I really want to make a good quality picture that will last. Because, in a way, I think it's a little bit selfish to just paint for yourself and just make a painting that lasts for your lifetime and if you make a good painting you you sort of owe it to the next generations to actually pass it on yeah and that, but I, w I would say it's even less egoistic because it's uh, you're con you're satisfied with less than mm. if you're not really thinking long term yeah but before we get into how you actually manage to i mean this reminds me of that, that story of um, Baron von, von Münchhausen. You know, <laughs> when he pulls himself yeah. up out of that, yeah. uh, uh, what is it, um, what, qu quicksand? Uh, he and his horse are, are yeah, in quicksand and he quick takes himself in the, the air and pulls himself I up. I think in this film that yeah. it's out of the water. Yeah, yeah. 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 anyways, I mean, it's, it's yeah. uh, quite a feat, uh, <laughs> however you look on it. Yeah. Um, but um, so we'll get to how you <laughs> pull <laughs> yourself up out of the hat. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about this first, a little bit about what yeah. you're doing now, sure. and then we go back to the beginning. How okay, so we here? really do some uh, time yeah, jumps yeah. here. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my uh, current painting. It's uh, in a halfway stage, sort of. Mm. I got yeah. It's sort of two months in, I think, one and a half, okay. perhaps. And the motif is Judas, uh, the, the suicide of Judas, mm. hanging on, on the tree. Mm. And this motif I actually had really early on, 
to to uh, paint and I, I never thought I, I could actually have this I didn't have the skill yet to to paint it because before I came here I only painted one figure usually right. not two figures interacting or Can I pause you again? I mean, yeah. Did you from the quite quite early have an idea that you wanted to tell stories or, or have a scene going on? Well, uh, well, it's uh, it's complicated. A story can yeah. be one way to to uh, get a point across. Yeah. But uh, then you also have something like uh, hope from Watts, which doesn't have any story. Well, so not an action going on. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, it's not not my goal exactly to make stories. It's more to get a, a certain melancholic mood across and and uh, and uh, play with a uh, symbolism mm -hmm. that is not in your nose. <laughs> right. Like yeah. typically, symbolism is. Uh, I'm extremely concerned with that. Yeah. So, uh, and that was actually one of the ideas I really had a long time in my head and I really wanted to paint and uh, I'm really happy with where it's going but it's a struggle of course mm. so what are you planning to do with this now is there anything that is not working not working at all is the <laughs> baby <laughs> I mean it totally breaks the the shape and those horrible legs hanging on there it's mm. uh, it's just not uh, good at all no, but just you, you seem to be a painter who has a very fairly clear idea of how the image will be mm -hmm. and then progress quite yeah. clear from that. I mean, do you generally do a lot of changes or is it more...? Well, I, the, the thing is I, I usually have a very clear idea about the composition. The actual uh, meaning and how, how the painting is going to shift is extremely loose. Mm. I, I mean, extremely. Mm. I, I didn't even know what this figure on, on the right there was for the longest time. It just what is sort of figure that was in the dark, you could barely see it actually. Because it's based on these medieval uh, illustrations and sort of icons of Judas hanging. Mm. And it's usually a demon ripping out the soul of Judas out of his intestines. Right. And uh, I, I always had a problem with that especially. Why a demon? I don't think Judas uh, deserves death. Especially when you read the Gospel of Judas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. Well, I have to read that still. But. And then I thought, what should it be? First, I think it should be uh, a woman. Because uh, it's a... I think it's... It's a woman who, who will take the soul. And of course, uh, she she goes to Judas, and then she will take the the soul to whatever hell uh, or heaven or a limbo, or whatever. So she has to have a staff because she's a she's a wanderer. Then I then I thought, um, how exactly uh, should the the robes be? So because there should be some sort of historical accuracy also, because uh, of course it's those times uh, in this specific place and they would have a sort of head covering and then I put that on right yeah. and that's uh, sort of how I construct the the image I, I sort of I don't have this at all plan out besides Judas hanging there the figure is there on the side and then you sort of move your move your uh, self across to Right. Are you thinking then that the baby is his soul? Yeah, that's uh, how he's often <coughs> depicted. And I think that's the, the best possible symbolism. Yeah. And I think that, yeah, okay. So, so this is a good uh, way, good place to stop mm -hmm. before we get too much into that, because I want to get to jump back. At, the, at the end of the, <laughs> yeah. the conversation here. Uh, this thing about how do you tell a story and how can you be a Use symbols, but not be symbolistic, mm -hmm. so it's in your face. Um, but let's go from the very beginning, like because I think that's what we sort of agreed upon mm -hmm. with this conversation. This is you telling the new generation what is the truth. How do you the, go the about truth. the truth? Are we about talking about self learning. The truth? <laughs> yes. Now, how do you go about self learning if you don't have anywhere immediately accessible for you? 
how can you go about it? What, like what inspirations do you go to? Where do you, what do you search for? Uh, go to the bookstore or yeah. go to uh, whatever place you can uh, get good reproductions of uh, paintings and really go in, take, take a day, take whatever and uh, look what, what it speaks to me and just be very pure about it. What speaks to me, what doesn't speak to me and then buy the things that speak to you. And I believe that is absolutely the way to start out, to, to have some guides of great painters mm. who speak to you. Yeah. Because it's just uh, good to have like a Virgil to your uh, Dante, you know? Right. To speak in to guide metaphors. Yeah. 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 And then go home and uh, I guess in whatever way you want to go, you can start with a landscape, you can start with, a, with a, the, the fruits, or you can do a portrait. And uh, I chose the portrait roads because that's more the most interesting to me personally. And Rembrandt uh, suggested to me uh, you should do a self-portrait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so you just really don't think about uh, this whole cliche of originality. You just really go into it and try to do mm. the same, right? No, um, that there is no... Uh, if you're learning, <laughs> originality will not be useful to you mm. at all. Mm. If you're learning, you are the student and you have to be the student to a master. Yeah. And those masters can come from books. Those masters can be a, a real teacher. Um, but you have to start somewhere. And my, my suggestion is to start simple and start with a portrait and really really work on it, give it time, work on it for a while, really get into it. And it doesn't have to be good mm. <laughs> at all. But uh, look at the Rembrandts and, and see the, the shadow is sort of this color, the light is sort of this color. There's a little bit of red there, there's a little bit of uh, gray there. And then just get that roughly in. Doesn't even have to be likeness or uh, it doesn't have to be good. It just get it in, get it, get the most horrible things out first and then go back the next day and work on it. Correct your mistakes. The best thing you can do in the beginning is mistakes. <laughs> if you do everything fantastically, I mean, then you're a genius. The mm. best thing to learn is to make mistakes and then fix them. Identify what are mistakes and fix them. Right. So uh, that's my very basic suggestion how to how do you start it out? But then do you, like in specific ways to, to, to uh, tackle it, would you, would you do base a self-portrait, for example, exactly on the Rembrandt self-portrait or, or how specifically would you use these inspirations? I mean, if you're ambitious, you can also have a Velasquez next to it and uh, sort of make a mix out of it. Take the best things from each and uh, Whatever speaks this nose is more intriguing than this one. Uh, I sort of based more on that. Mm. And, uh, but I, I would suggest focusing on, on one, one painter first before you get too ambitious. Mm. And in my opinion, Rembrandt is a really good overall guide to learn, especially a middle aged sort of Rembrandt. Mm. And why? If, like, if you give him some bullet points on why, what exactly does Rembrandt teach you? Well, of course, uh, first the lights and the shadow, and how to also in terms of uh, storytelling, how to make a good expression. But also, uh, very basically, the technique is extremely noticeable. I mean, the the, the textures are in the lights, and the thin is in the shadow, and that's extremely basic in sort of middle-aged Rembrandt mm. mm. self-portraits yeah and uh, not that many colors uh, I mean you're coming extremely far with the palace palette I mean can copy any Rembrandt with that basically right yeah. uh, it's entirely sufficient and sort of uh, try to try to do your best to make your because I wanted to say, don't. I'm not. I don't believe in copying a painting. Uh, make a copying of Rembrandt self-portrait, yeah. for example. I don't yeah. believe in that. 
I think you should immediately start out with uh, looking at Rembrandt and copying the technique and how he thinks and then to your to yourself or to yeah. the model yeah and get that on the canvas later on making studies making copies is is a fine uh, exercise really good actually but to begin with i don't suggest it mm. because you get really stuck in there do you see a lot of young painters making a copy and then another copy and another copy and it's then three years later and all they did was copies and this is not going to be interesting at all later on that you just did copies for three years yeah i mean it has to be to learn the basic rules ba mm. basic ways of doing things so mm. that you can create other images yeah exactly but n not for the sake of originality yeah. but f yeah. because you the story has to mean something to you, right? Yeah, exactly. You have to, you have mm. something to say if you want. If yeah. you have the the need to be a painter, if you want to be a painter, you have something to say clearly, mm. and don't just uh, spend your time copying a painting. Mm. So, so w when you were looking at Rembrandt uh, books, for example, is, it, is there a specific uh, some specific light bulb moments or things that you really? learned from uh, from Rembrandt other th than the things that you learned that that, that you mentioned uh, now um in what specific uh, area you mean technique wise or uh? yeah yeah i mean because that, i guess that's how you start just focusing mm. really on the technique and mm -hmm. not trying to be too um what do you call it um pretentious mm -hmm. about the the content in the beginning so i mean for very base like extreme beginners i would of course say do some research first what is the just some article or I guess there are great videos on YouTube, perhaps even some good books uh, on the basics of uh, painting and what the difference between a la prima is a direct way of painting between a layered way of painting mm. and sort of get you the terms in your head just so you know what the people are talking about and and uh, learn uh, what's what the whole theory behind building up layers is this is quite quite good to know mm. while you also practice painting it's a theoretical uh, is the theoretical is really important to also learn okay just sitting down mm. with your computer do some research but so, uh, but, but you have any specific books on that to recommend or i haven't learned uh, from books i personally learned from uh, watching other people paint on uh, youtube right and just having these uh, top 10 tips for uh, a la prima painting, or top 10 tips for uh, whatever. Or right, okay, so just... How, uh, how Titian made a painting, mm. <laughs> mm. Or how Rembrandt made a painting. Mm. Sort of like that, yeah. But how, how do you, I mean, you talked about, uh, prior to, to us sitting down here, uh, you talked about this thing about sort of embracing your talent or understanding where your talent goes. Yeah. Uh, it. I, I would really suggest don't go, uh, don't swim against the stream. There's no use in that. O the only thing you're going to give yourself is a headache. Mm. <clears throat> if you naturally uh, think more in the in the alla prima way, or a, a more direct way of painting, just really go into that. Because if it's hard for you to get the layering in your head, I, I don't think you should go too much into it. Mm. I mean, life is way too short for that, <laughs> to, to swim against the stream there. Mm. Unless you really feel like you, you want to achieve this certain effect, you can only do with layering. Mm. But uh, and also, if you, if you f are not particularly well with faces, landscape paintings are one of the most fantastic things. Kasper Friedrich, that's better than most uh, portraits, more expressive, mm -hmm. more psychological. Uh, if you uh, want to paint a vanitas painting uh, with a bunch of skulls of fruit, that's f absolutely great. You can tell almost better stories than some, uh, not to be mean, but some Rubens pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that can be too much. Yeah, yeah, that, that's too much action, or it can yeah. be too much action. Mm. Yeah, but then how? You, like, so if you, if you, it, it, how, how is that? Uh, idea then that that you have to have some interest in what you paint mm -hmm. but on the other hand certain things you just need to practice yeah 
So do you have any advice on, on, on that? Because I mean, if, you, if you're only doing exercises, I guess, then you easily get bored, it becomes a duty mm. and it doesn't give you joy, right? No, I think the, the goal, the, the key really is there to allow yourself to suck in the beginning. <laughs> okay. mm. the, the most important thing is what you want to paint, yeah. not how you paint it. And unless it's abstract, don't do that, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, but you, you yeah. talk about the, the joy of doing yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you have an idea and you want to paint it. And then you just sort of go your way through the dark forest and sort of find your path. This works, this doesn't. This worked well in the last painting. This didn't work well in the last painting. I will do it differently in the next one. Hmm. So really, and it's, it's this uh, whole uh, conundrum with uh, people buying sketchbooks and then being afraid of sketching into it because the, the paper is so fine and it's empty. And it's so perfect, a perfect sketchbook. Hmm. And then you have your uh, horrible scribble in it. So. Mm. But uh, just really go at it and focus on what you want to do. The, the story, the face, the landscape. That should be your main focus. Mm. Yeah. So, but you, you necessarily go forth and back between the interest of the story or mm. the, the motif and how you paint it. Yeah. And, and it could be interesting to hear you talk about how, what you learned about uh, this thing, about how you paint different things, the texture of different things, and, and well, how much does it matter? Mm. Well, <clears throat> it uh, doesn't matter much, and in the same time it can matter a lot, because in the end, how well a painting is painted is makes or breaks an image. Mm. You can uh, paint the prodigal son in, a, in the most horrible way, I saw uh, copies of that or uh, reinterpretations of that, which is just terrible. And the, the, the story doesn't work anymore. The expression is, doesn't give any feeling to it. And that's on the basis, they tell us them the same story, but it's purely on the basis that it's not well painted. The mm. technique is not there. Yeah. The knowledge of what color is not there, the knowledge of what contrast. And so in a way, technique is a more, uh, uh, intermediate or ad advanced thing to worry about, but you will arrive at a point where it becomes incredibly important, mm. which also can uh, lead you to a wrong path because if you just if you start just focusing on technique, that's uh, also make, going to make you a horribly boring painter. Yeah, well, you you miss out on at least fifty percent of what the human being is if you. Yeah take away the melancholy or the story of what's going on there if, if you're doing portraits or doing... I mean, you can uh, say it's sort of like this, that's the, uh, the, the story is uh, the psychology mm. of, the, of a person, the melancholia, and the technique is sort of the outside, the skin. Mm. And as, uh, as humans, we express our insides uh, through, through the outside. So if you're angry, you have an angry face. It's not like uh, the hippie guys who say we have an angry aura, so, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. um, so uh, technique is important sort of as, as a way to, to get the subtlety of it all, mm. to get, really get into it. Another way to think about it is, is that the technique or the lack of technique shouldn't be in your way of uh, telling a good story. Mm. That's... Uh, that's a good way to think about, uh, think like that for intermediate people. You should be good enough so you don't stand in, in your own way to tell a story or get the composition. Just very later on, uh, if you're in uh, for five years or seven years, you can start to really think, what if I uh, paint more textured here so it catches the light more? And how should I uh, apply the colors? What effect does it give when I glaze here a little bit, you know, mm. then that really becomes interesting and can become sort of a, a meaning of, its, of itself. Right, so you don't, you don't think so much about layering uh, texture and these things in the beginning um, because no. it's enough to learn yeah. placement. When I, when I started, it's, it's very basic. That's the shadow 
on that slide. What mm. I di did think about is uh, the, the basic blocking, and that's also just the basics of drawing apply also to painting. So how do you think then? Basic lane, you're looking at yourself in the mirror, how do you, what, what do you well, search for? This is sort of a line and the length of this line is sort of in comparison to this and this angle. That's sort of how you sketch in the shadows and the same with the light. Yeah, you so look for these patches. Simplify, yeah. Make, yeah. make the shapes, see your face sort of as, uh, as a thing mm. to paint in, in abstract shapes. Do, do you th th or did you then in the beginning think much of composition? I mean, because you have well, to do I, that I, a little bit with I, portraits too, right? I just copied the composition of a Rembrandt Yeah. on my own face. Yeah. So it was a copy of a Rembrandt with my face. Yeah. Same lighting, I set up everything, same lighting to make it easy for myself because yeah. it doesn't have to stand in the way. I'm just practicing. Mm. But, but how, how have you gone about studying composition then? If you only have these books uh, available or uh, whatever images on your computer, how do you analyze them or how do you try to learn composition, the basics of the composition? Well, uh, the very basic way to start out with that is uh, sort of paint the lines in. Get the, the grid in and see how they, what kind of lines, how the figures fall into that. That's a, that's a very basic uh, fundamental of composition. Mm -hmm. And many painters uh, actually help, help hold themselves accountable to those lines very much. Later on you can lose it a little bit because then it can become a little bit stiff. But uh, yes, in terms of analyzing how to do a composition, I mean, you just uh, compare. Compare uh, two subjects, get a, get a Jesus on a cross <laughs> of one you really like and one who's, who's a good but it, it doesn't work quite as well as the other one. And then put them next to each other, the best to sort of have the same size. And then why does this work and why doesn't this work? Hmm. What's the problem here and what is good here? And, and compare. This figure here is more, more uh, angled, which uh, gives it a more uh, better flow or uh, this line of the arms really breaks the whole shape of the whatever or the light is coming from the wrong directions this shadow is cast strongly the expressions uh, they don't interact well together the figures sort of like that's that's uh, you just get little bits and pieces like a puzzle and put it together and mm. uh, really think about why <coughs> something works and something doesn't Mm. Thinking is uh, really undervalued. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, know. Uh, I remember Arnold was uh, talking about how he would, for example, when he went to concerts, he would sit with uh, Titian or Caravaggio, I, gu I guess mainly those two, mm. and study the analyze this from corner to corner, corner to corner, and, and make the middle to line horizontally and vertically, mm. and, and then start just whatever corner pops up, you take a line from that corner to another corner and you see how things work out. Mm. And I, I have to say, I've done, my <laughs> I've done that in some books. So I started to use this, uh, what do you call it? Um, this this uh, paper that you can see through mm -hmm. and then make the, make the lines. And of course, <clears throat> when you start to try to understand this and you get really eager, there's so many lines you don't you you don't see the painting in Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think I, mean, uh, I think it helps still because it sort of gets you into thinking. Okay, if something is here, it has to relate to something that is there, and you start thinking about balance. Yeah, you you're, you're training your brain to see the underlying structure of a painting. Yeah, and that's important to first see in other paintings before you can even do it in your own painting. Yeah, you have an, you have to have an understanding of it. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's funny to see all the books here, they, all of them have the, at least one line. <laughs> Always little scribbles there. Ah, this works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I've seen Odnerum do it, do it too. When you have, or when it's had things that are, you know, at the point where you would be happy that this was a finished painting. Mm. And something's not working, and so he does this, like it's a construction 
uh, whatever. Uh, it has a box and a line, and it has mm. chalk in it. And yeah, you can uh, you can uh, fling it, and you get that that white line. And he's done that with the composition, with this these lines, and then moves a little bit one thing a little bit up, so it just goes across that line, and then it connects with this, and it's a completely hidden mm. connection. Yeah, but it gives yeah. that contact. Yeah. Well, but mm. uh, in a way, he's so advanced right now that he can even go a little bit beyond that, mm. because he uh, really starts to bend those lines and mm. make things that are not. Uh, controlled by this uh, symmetry hmm. because that's also uh, y y of course you have to learn the rules but uh, there's virtue in going beyond the rules and that's there is. Yeah. yeah but it's like that <coughs> okay so th th that's also a technical question then, because people love to have this set clear rules about soft skin you paint like this uh, uh, br some uh, crust, bread of, uh, crust of bread you paint mm. like that or whatever. No, uh, forget that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, uh, it's it's so in the, it's so dependent on what exactly you paint and who you paint. Don't adjust what you want to paint according to your technique. Adjust your technique according to what you want to paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I, I don't know if I was clear. I guess that that's what I'm talking about. If you yeah. Yeah, 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 think yeah. about. You p would paint an apple with the smoother strokes mm -hmm. and you paint something rough with the more rough strokes, right? Like oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to recreate. The, the yeah. technique has to serve the recreation of matter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I guess we both know that there are examples that go completely counter to that. But I mean, if you're starting somewhere, mm. I guess that's a good starting point. Yeah. yeah, I mean, don't even think about that in the very beginning. Just. Uh, Learn the basics, the, actually the block in and the lines and everything. Mm. Really, uh, the theoretical side of it is really important. And know that you are a student and you're not a great, great mind yet, a great painter. And uh, seek comfort in that, but also try to move beyond that. Mm. Don't, don't be uh, frustrated if, if it takes a long while to get to the point where you want to go. Don't. Uh, turn into an abstract painter <laughs> to to uh, cover up your mistakes. Hey, that reminds me that that's a good segue because we have some questions here from the from the audience. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so this is uh, a question from a, a user on Facebook. Um, as a German, how did you overcome the current culture of non-skilled conceptual art that is pervasive in Germany today and follow a scorned path of truth back through history and find yourself in the process? So th there's a lot of here, but uh, let, let's start with this, this thing first, because I want to ask you the uh, same thing, which also relates to how do you think when you tr you're trying to teach yourself? Mm -hmm. So wh how did you think about conceptual art and, and modern art and uh, these things being favored and what you're doing obviously not being I, favored. I, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've, I did not waste any amount of thoughts in that. I'm just not in that. Really? Yeah. All I did was uh, I have a canvas in my room and I want to paint yeah. this face. Yeah. And perhaps I'm a little bit uh, different there in the sense that I did not have the concept of wanting to be an artist actually ever right it's always felt a little bit strange you didn't have this thing about expressing yeah, myself no, and blah blah no yeah. every time someone uh, says oh this is great art or you're an artist and it's, like, ah, it's the, tr the tree is okay but it's uh, <laughs> it's not something uh, it's a tree uh, it's just a practice don't uh <laughs> that's interesting then that you so if i understand you correctly you were so concerned with getting achieving the skill of uh, being able, at least in the beginning, to represent what you see. Mm. So when people start talking about art, it becomes some grand plan that you're no, not concerned with. Right? I, uh, I understand the interest in it, but uh, I, I'm, I don't care. Yeah. I just don't care. <laughs> I don't think they're connected in any way. And I, you, I, you didn't think about, oh, Kiefer is doing that, oh, I should be doing that, and no. <laughs> uh, they are liking it, all those critics. And I mean, for, a, for, a, for a quite a while I was uh, fascinated with Schiele, that's oh, yeah. a, but that's about mm. as abstract as it's ever got for mm. in, in terms of inspirations. Mm. Yeah. 
I, I did try to uh, apply to art schools, of course, because I thought I'm a painter. Where do I, yeah. where do I go uh, to uh, learn painting? And I was very naive in, in that thought. Because, of course, there are no apprenticeships anymore as a painter. So where do you go? An art school. I don't go to any art school because, of course, I know they don't do painting anymore. Mm. But uh, I went to Dresden, or I tried at, at Leipzig to uh, apply there because it was known that they still are more conservative, uh, do actual uh, figurative. They have at least a model standing there. And it was my basic thing. I just get in there, I have a model, I can practice. Uh, perhaps I find another painter I can talk to. So it was quite naive and I did not get into any and I tried for mm. three years or mm. two and a half. Uh, and then I just thought uh, that, uh, it's just not the way. Uh, and I don't want to... Uh, uh, there's nothing in me that makes me want to change the way I think and I do my work just to get into the school. Mm. And I guess... I guess it uh, people reveal themselves how much social aggression they have or not. Mm. But, but um, so, is there any advice, any thoughts you can share about how it, how do you think about the situation that this is being so accepted? I mean, if for people who are concerned with it, is it in a way you can I, I don't calm care. them down. I don't. I don't. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. But, but that's if, it. if if yeah. if someone makes a lot of money. Yeah. And mm. I'm uh, I'm poor. Mm. I, I don't care. Mm. It doesn't help me mm. that the guy has a lot of money. Mm. It's not my concern. Yeah, because I, I think uh, this is one of my uh, uh, frequently mentioned points that the, your mindset has so much to do with it. Not just your ability to mm. actual actually paint, but if you're constantly seeing, oh, this is being favored. Oh, that's where they want to yeah. go. Or and you have this meetings with the uh, art historians, whatever, who look at you in a patronizing way, or mm. that tends to affect people. So, but then again, you could say that, well, they show what kind of talent they are, depending on how they re react to it, so. No, um, my advice there is just don't listen to the, the people you're, you're, you have a connection with, the same way you should listen to the paintings you look at, which are driving with you mm. it's a uh, I, I have no needs to impress someone aside from myself mm. or perhaps a, a teacher I admire like odd mm. but even there um, it's uh, dangerous to get too much into the pleasing uh, mo way of thinking and uh, I, I think it's exhausting having this this fight let's let people uh, think if they think what they do is right then that's right mm. i think we currently have enough uh, of a beginning to as as uh, figurative or traditional painters whatever to uh, we have this bubble which is uh, is expanding and s stay within there um, and try to make it grow yeah, because I think... Focus on what's important. <clears throat> a lot is, of energy is misspent on looking at what the art world is mm. concerned with or being anxious about that in, in, in any way. And of course, it also yeah. has to do with your values. If your values are, I want to make money, mm. then you start thinking about that. And speaking of that, so since you are the, the advice guy here, <laughs> when you're learning, because there, there's not just a question of... of uh, buying a Rembrandt book and learning the technique or studying the, the technique there. How to develop your mindset to understand what classical values are or were you concerned with that early on or when did you get into that or like... Well, I, 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 uh, what I to think... What to read, what to... Yeah. I think I'm still not all too concerned with that actually. <laughs> um, I think uh, I'm someone who just listens to what my gut says and that's not very good advice because you got can say all sorts of things that's true yeah but uh <clears throat> the way i came to uh, the point where i'm now as a painter is just through thinking what is the most important in life 
and what comes naturally to me, which was drawing, and the natural transition was then towards painting. And I should go in that. And I'm not all too concerned with uh, reading about a lot of philosophy. And I will do that later on in my life because I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. But early on, I think it's it's very valuable to a little bit listen to yourself and actually think what is the most important and essential things in life. Mm. And what you uh, said in a recent morning meeting was uh, your definition of melancholia was uh, your realization of what is most important uh, in life. Mm. And I, I think if you really stay in that, you see a lot of things. And yeah. you also see yeah. when you're lying to yourself. Yeah. Because that's thing not being distracted by... Mm. All the contemporary buzz and uh, think about think about uh, what you w what your thoughts are when when you go to sleep and uh, uh, like uh, the little demons who are troubling you <laughs> and sort of uh, wrestle with them. Yeah, and then also do the Wim Hof breathing med method. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> meditate. True. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so th this is another question. I from user on, on Instagram. What is the most challenging aspect of being autodidactic, self-taught, uh, that you have encountered so far? And what advice may you share? Having a good working e ethic. Right. <laughs> Structuring your day according to your work. Mm. Because there's no one who tells you, you have to be there on time, you have to do that work, and you have to stay for that long. Mm. I mean, if you want to learn something, then by yourself. And you really have to get disciplined enough to sit down and actually do the work, at least enough to improve. Mm. Yeah. So to uh, get a Peterson uh, quote in there, sort of uh, figure out your life. A Peterson a day keeps the art away. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Mm. Clean your room, get your, get your head in order yeah 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 because i think um, yeah especially I mean, it's so important to be aware of the, the what you're doing what is important mm. as you, you say what you really want to focus on so you don't get distracted by all the, the other things because there's so much distractions going on right? yeah yeah oh my god the yeah. the world today is really uh, distracting yeah but there's also this and that's what i guess i'm concerned with being aware of these modern art values, mm. expressing yourself and being original, all these things, and knowing which direction that goes and which direction, uh, and w or what are the classical values, how do they differ? Mm. Um, because I do think you can hinder your own progress if you're confusing these, these values. So of course, there's yeah. some kind of mm. awareness, I, I, I do think. Mm. Um, and there was this funny quote by the Swedish author who was asked about inspiration. And he said, I'm never inspired. Sometimes <laughs> I just go slower than other days, but I just write myself through it. Yeah. yeah. Which is not supposed to be like a whip myself uh, duty kind mm. of thing, but it's a professional relation to what you're doing. It's a dis yeah. discipline, it's a D job. Don't be a child. <laughs> yeah. Don't be impulsive. Mm. Mm. Actually work on it, yeah, yeah. what you want to do. Yeah. This is work. Yeah. Painting is work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. And this is work. So this mm. is what when we get back to working with something that is a pain in the ass and you cannot solve it. And how do you find the solution? Oh my God, I hate this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's game so, so much struggle. Let's let's pause <laughs> there and, and really feel it. Now, so, so yeah, and that can tie nicely into what you were saying about uh, about getting the books of painters that you enjoy. Like if you're going to doctor this painting, would you go then to Rembrandt or or how would you go about it to find out? what you can do mm. do about it. If you're, you're alone, you can't, cannot go and ask Adnodrum mm. what, what's go, going on here. Well, how I actually came to this painting specifically was um, by developing an, developing an interest in uh, icon paintings. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Because I knew from the get-go that this should not be a historic painting. This is not a depiction of what actually happens. Mm. This is a symbolic depiction of 
of uh, Judas regrets as he passes away. Yeah. And icon paintings, um, in my mind, are a fantastic entry point to a very fundamental uh, symbolic depiction of things. Mm. Because it's not literal. Not even the faces are literal depictions of it, human faces. Mm. And that's sort of how I... I figured out the way how to think of this painting in a combination of also uh, hope from Watts because she's in my mind not a literal human or a god for that matter. She's a sort of a, a symbol herself. She as a whole is a, is a symbolic figure which s symbolizes a certain feeling. And I wanted to have the same with uh, the woman in purple mm. or the whatever she is. I don't know yeah. exactly. Yeah. So uh, that's sort of, uh, it's uh, interesting because I really slipped into uh, a sort of, I, I removed myself from this uh, need to be literal. So Judas is hanging there and he's painted very literally, but as it moves, it becomes more, uh, m more uh, symbolic. So everything on mm -hmm. next to Judas is not literally there. And that's one great uh, thing I learned from Odd recently on his uh, latest two pictures, that there can be a degree of reality in your painting, mm -hmm. which also yeah. is shown in icon paintings, of course. I mean, the halo is not literally there. Or... Uh, <clears throat> If there's this great icon of uh, Moses, I think, where it's, it's three Moses in, in one icon, and I think, what's going on there? <laughs> well, of course, it's not literally three Moses standing there. It's, it's his uh, different points of his life, his journey. Yeah. So, so that you're, you're thinking realistic, but you don't get caught up in being completely naturalistic. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, one foot should always be uh, in uh, in reality always yeah yeah because uh it has to have a relation pure symbolism can really go astray so okay so give us an example like what you see as a image of, a, of pure symbolism or, or what is typically wrong with a pure symbolistic a bad vanitas painting for example yeah the skull represents death yeah this flower represents sorrow uh, the worm uh, represents decay, whatever. Mm. Mm. Just these very low resolution meanings for uh, one thing. Mm. A good symbol is when it, it, there's more into it the deeper you go. Yeah. So it unfolds itself. That, and that's what Ott uh, also recently said is um, a good painting is when there's more in the painting than, uh, than the painter knows. So if there's something more than he was conscious of while he was painting it, mm. then that's a great painting because then it can start to live on its own and separate it from you. It can detach itself from you and it sort of grows there and moves mm. because it just, the deeper you go, the more symbols pop up and you can go in these symbols and it's just, this this endless uh, worlds of meaning which opens up, yeah. in a way. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing as as um, yeah. Just this morning, we, I was talking to him about something he was doing on a painting, and and uh, that it should be more red, the a mm. rucksack that the figure was wearing, and. It could also it could be symbolic of blood, but it could also be just that the rucksack is red. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's a quite subtle thing. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be uh, too deep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's uh, it's uh, I never forget this woman. She had made this portrait, and then she puts a, a scorpion there, which mm. symbolizes something. And then, okay. Then you have to start to read the painting. Yeah. Right? You have to or read up on on the symbols to what, understand. Yeah. It. What yeah. does the toad mean? Why is yeah. the toad yeah. a symbol for Christ? Yeah stuff like that yeah, yeah. and then it gets really because then it's then the symbolism is just based on historic understandings of things yeah and it's yeah. Uh, it gets really tedious it, it doesn't come natural it's not natural symbolism 
Mm. Yeah. Right. It has to be in the same way as, as a composition has to must not be clearly composed. Mm. It mustn't be a sim symbol mustn't be too sim clear as a symbol either. Yeah. I mean, but it's also strange. It, you know, okay. But also don't diffuse it. Don't make it uh, more complicated than it needs to be. You yeah. know, don't yeah. don't uh, lie. Don't make magic tricks. Yeah. A good uh, symbol is what uh, happens when you don't too consciously think about it. I think while you paint. And then sort of new ways of doing things pop up, which can turn more symbolic as you work on them. Yeah, or, I mean, I guess you can be, I would say you should be very con, con, uh, conscious of it, but you mustn't emphasize it so much that it takes over. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean uh, yeah. that's also a way you could put it, but yeah. uh, I actually think if you're too conscious of the whole painting and you start analyzing it while you paint, paint it, like constantly. You sit down and at the end of the day, you mm. always uh, analyze the painting. I, s I think that it can also really go astray mm. because uh, then you get too caught up in, in what you think about the painting. Yeah, yeah. So are there any other mistakes you can make? when you're trying to tell a story or like what's a, what's the basic bullet points on what you should think when you if you want to try to s create some kind of a story with mm. like one or two figures like what's the do's and don'ts as, as far as you've learned don't, don't uh, paint a static moment there should be uh, something uh, happening before and there should be something happening after so uh, if, a, if you, you can't imagine a moment after the painting or a moment before the painting, it will always stay in this little bubble and it will feel a little bit uh, strange and stiff. Mm -hmm. Or, for example, just a war scene, f which is a narrative, but there's not much beyond the fact that they are just fighting right now. Unless it's a really good painting where it's indicated how it's going to end and how it started. Yeah, but so just depicting purely what was is happening in the moment. That's not going to lead you anywhere, except mm. for a historical painting, perhaps. That's what you want in that case. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's kind of like um, with Ibsen when he was crafting his figures, he would think of the backstory, what they did before the actual play we're doing. Yeah, we we're, we're, we're watching. Yeah. Where where do they come from? Uh, where do they go? Yeah, and uh, reflects that in in the moment. Mm. All right, but um, yeah, you you spoke of icons. So what can you learn from icons then? Oh, so much. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, the compositions are just absolutely incredible on a good icon, mm. especially uh, quite early uh, Russian icons and. I guess Greek icons as well. The 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 structure, how they are, they have this. I don't like to use the word, but this divine uh, symmetry, which is not perfect symmetry, because uh, everything is still a little bit uh, crooked, and the the figures are not mirroring literally each, each other, but they're still in a similar position, mm -hmm. and it creates a really striking sort of unnatural atmosphere and it really uh, just also the way uh, there's a hierarchy often in it in the middle it's the most important and then when it moves out it becomes less important in some icons mm. so there's just so much to learn from structurally how to tell a story how to make something more important something less important and then also the interactions of the figures are often important point. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, the way the figures interact without having this uh, the big Rubens expression or the the big Baroque uh, faces, they're very uh, subdued, but it gets the 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 story across very beautifully and and in a way symbolically. Mm. 
uh, I think the the faces, and especially when they when they slightly tilt, is is just the most fantastic thing. Yeah, you can compare it with like your typical image of of someone who is very contemporary in as a figurative painter in the motif uh, and the whole atmosphere of mm. what is being depicted. And you typically see there's a lot of this casual mm. positions, casual looks, casual everything's casual. Everything is just transitory. Yeah. And I th I guess the icons are like the opposite mm -hmm. <laughs> of that. Icons are almost as quiet as you can get a picture. Mm. It's to me an icon is is the is the ultimate depiction of a sort of melancholy. Mm. Because uh, an icon is actually sort of an object. The icon is a symbol itself, but it is used for contemplation. That's yes, the that's true. the use of an icon. That's right. its purpose. It shall focus your attention, yeah. right? And it shows you an ideal, and it uh, shows you a story, and it shows you humans, and sometimes actually even with flaws and everything. Hmm. So, uh, to me, icons are absolutely. A fantastic source for painters. That being said, <laughs> I think there is a there there is a way to move beyond this very abstract depiction of the faces. Mm. That is something that bothers me a little bit as a painting itself, yeah. because it stands in my mind a little bit in the way still of telling the story fully. But that's not why you're looking at icons, right? Exactly. No. Yeah, so but that's how I think when I use an icon to make my own painting. Yeah. So have you done it specifically here or like or in another painting? Like, what ex exactly, if you can define it, what exactly do you try to transfer or from well, an icon? This uh, figure here is basically a perfect copy of uh, Andrei Rublev, a uh, Mary, I think, mm -hmm. with a very dark cloak and a tilted head mm -hmm. and it's almost exactly the same the same shape yeah. and it's the same with the with the figure here the the way the, the head one? is yeah the other one yeah the angle of the face is like how a, an icon face would be angled mm. so uh, she's not so much inspired by icons but he's almost painted like a saint of an icon that's true that's true uh, that that fascinates me because then what you just we talked earlier on about you know, looking at Rembrandt, learning strokes, stick in the light, thin in the shadow, this like basic things. Mm. But what you're talking about now is to also learn a, a, a sort of the grammar of mm. storytelling. Yeah. And not copying as such, but copying the 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 point of it or mm. the, the the purpose of it. And in the end, it has to. All together, it has to work sort of instantaneously. Hmm. You, you look at the painting and nothing particularly sticks out. It works as a, a wholeness and it, it makes you... <gasps> if That's what Odd also says often. Hmm. Is if, if a painting is like... <gasps> hmm. If there's a breathing in and you hold your breath for a second. If, if a painting gives you that, then you really got something there. Right. And you want to return to it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's true. And when you have these moments where you also you look at a painting and you just look at that knee and suddenly you can feel your own knee. Right? Mm. This total yeah. identification <laughs> with what's going on there. Yeah. God, that's true. Or you, you mirror the, the hand shapes or sort of... Mm. I, I like to think when I watch people look at paintings, they sort of adjust their expression mm. to the painting. <laughs> Very subtly, yeah, but yeah. I think there is something there. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's really a, a balance balancing act between all these things, and there is not one thing that is more important than the other. In the end, it's about having a very well balanced painting in all fields, and that's the goal you should uh, try to reach. Mm -hmm. So. For you then, moving onwards, what what are the things that you need to learn that you see that you really need to integrate into what you're doing? I have to be uh, better about um, 
starting paintings, not getting too caught up in details. Okay. It's a huge mm -hmm. flaw of mine. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think um, it's important to get the face right first, to get the whole mood of, of a painting. So that's a little bit of a contradiction there. But um, <clears throat> one thing I really want to lean more into is the multiple figures interacting with each other. That's something I started not that long ago. So that's something I re I'm really enjoying. Mm. And then just figuring out the way how they interact with each other is so complicated. Mm. And constructing the, the image accordingly. I mean, even if you have a model, I mean, it's hard enough to just paint it from imagination like I did with this one. But, but uh, even with a model, that's tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Jesus. Right. Yeah. This interaction is, is so tender. Hard but, to get. But how do you then, because that, that's interesting, what you mentioned that you painted this without a model. Yeah, well, but this is uh, sort of based on me a little bit. Yeah. But uh, she is entirely out of imagination. And mm. I guess I uh, looked at other paintings. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, so, but how do you go about looking at the model and looking at the, the whatever painting you're studying? How, like, well, how do you integrate? Well, I, I often uh, think of it that way, that there should be three sources of where the figure comes from. I think it should be from life to get reality. Mm -hmm you should paint from uh, another painting or multiple paintings to get the ideal, s someone who already did it very well. And then you should get it um, from your imagination to get the, the psychology and the feeling and the melancholy mm. into it. So that's the way I, I like to construct a figure. And some figures, they don't need a literal model to stand there, I think. Some, it's also balancing. Some are, they want, they have to feel a little bit more ghostly, a little bit strange. And then you paint more from imagination and uh, look at other paintings. But some you want to be quite realistic and then you should use yourself for a model for it, as I did with Judas, because he has to feel a little bit more real than the figure next to it. Mm. So that you acquire some kind of uh, repertoire studying old masters, mm. some kind of repertoire of expressions or faces of whatever. Yeah, I have a funny little uh, catalogue of uh, yeah. paintings who serve me well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. So, uh, towards the end here, do you have like the top best advice you can give? What's, what's the important thing, how to endure as... Oh, oh God, it's always these radical questions. Yes, we want the truth. If you give me uh, 10 minutes to think about that. <laughs> uh, uh. Um, practice. <laughs> yeah. Don't be lazy. <laughs> if you want to learn painting, then learn painting and get your priority, priority straight. That's For advice. beginners, that's my advice. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Janne Kersum, thank you for coming to the Cable Palace. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you for watching. Remember to go to cablepalace.com slash subscribe and become a member today. I'll see you next month.